In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the gear that I used in 2023. Which of them was a good buy, and which of them is it time to say goodbye? All right, so we're going to split this up into three categories. We're going to do some riding gear. We're going to do some of the accessories that I have, and we're going to look at some of the camera gear um, that I used in 2023. So first up, riding gear. All right, so when it comes to riding gear, I'm a big proponent of the layering system. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it basically means keeping your armor and your jacket separate. Uh, you want the armor close to your body uh, and not inside of your jacket, which can rotate and move. And um, it's really not good for off-road. So you want to be doing that. Uh, but it starts with a good base layer. So when it gets really, really hot outside, uh, I use the Climb Aggressor uh, minus one. Um, when you sweat into this thing, it's like a fan almost when you're moving. Um, it just really, really cools you down. Uh, I don't know what material it's made with because they don't put it on their website, so it must be proprietary, but it works. Um, so if you're looking for something to keep you cool in the summer and, um, you know, wick away sweat, you can't go wrong with the aggressor. Uh, this is actually the original. Uh, they have a version two now uh, with a bunch of colors, which you can see on the screen now. Uh, so yeah, if you're uh, thinking of uh, a good base layer, highly recommend the Climb uh, Aggressor minus one. And um, this was a definite goodbye. Next up, we have the pads themselves. So I've gone with the 3DF uh, 6.0s. Um, these have been fantastic. I've um, crashed quite a few times with these on and um, haven't had any pain, bruising or anything uh, so far. Uh, no high speed crashes, obviously just low speed kind of stuff. And, um, yeah, they've held up really, really well. So really happy with that. Got the knee pads and the elbow guards, um, both the 6.0s. So these are definitely a good buy. Uh, highly recommend them. Don't cheap out on pads. Um, if you can, because this stuff is what's going to keep you, uh, keep you intact in case of a crash. So yes, goodbye for sure. So don't be like me and uh, wait till you break your ribs three times before investing in something like this. And that would be a really good chest protector. Um, if you're going to take your adventuring seriously and go off roading, uh, not just gravel and, you know, uh, road kind of stuff, but actually going off road, you really want a good chest protector. Um, I've had a few accidents, busted my ribs a, a few times, and I've now made the investment and I never leave home without it. Uh, this is the Liat 6.5, and um, I picked this one up specifically because it has the side uh, rib protection uh, here, which a lot of uh, chest protectors don't. They're mostly like a roost guard, uh, as they call them in the motocross world. But um, this and Force Field, I think, is the other brand that has it, but it looks pretty bulky um, and a little old, I guess, design wise. But um, that's uh, one brand you can get, or uh, this one here with the rib protection. Uh, it's absolutely great. This is probably the best buy that I've made in a long time. Uh, so this was well worth the money. And if you're uh, into protection, definitely get something like this. All right, well, let's keep this positive train going. Uh, the next piece is the Dakar uh, riding jacket, and I have the pants as well. Um, super happy with this. Uh, it's so cost effective because you're not getting the pads and all these other layers. Uh, cause remember we're doing the layering system, so you don't need waterproof or, um, you know, a heat shell or anything like that. You, you layer that in when you need it. Uh, so this is just the shell. Uh, it is abrasive resistant, uh, in all the right spots and, um, has reflective, uh, material in certain areas. And uh, yeah, you know what? Even the sleeves come off if you get really hot and you want to do that kind of thing. Uh, so absolutely love this. Um, highly recommend it, especially doing the um, the layering system. It's The price is really, really good. I think the jacket is only $300 and the pants are $250 uh, US. And um, yeah, you can't go wrong with this. Uh, an alternative, although twice the price, uh, if you want to do the layering system, is Moscomoto's uh, Basilisk. Um, uh, products really really nice looking stuff as well um, but yeah climb just can't go wrong with their stuff you know really properly made so these are the alpine star corazol dry star boots um, they're promoted as adventure boots so i figured they'd be good enough um, but after more research i realized that you know for the more technical stuff this stuff is just not going to cut it 
Um, there really should be a strap up here. Um, you know, the, you can see just how soft they are in the ankles and up here as well. Um, you can easily bend them. Um, you know, if you have a, a serious off, uh, off road or, um, you know, dab and, uh, get your ankle twisted, uh, this isn't going to cut it off road. So these are slated to be replaced. Uh, this is definitely a goodbye, uh, to these things. I don't know when I can replace them, but, uh, for any serious off-roading, I, I can't recommend these boots as an off-road boot. Um, unless you're doing just road and gravel, sure, uh, it could be good. They're waterproof. Uh, up to about here is where the um, uh, where the waterproof ends. Um, so when I did the river crossing on my last trip, um, my feet were soaked the entire day. Uh, all the water got in through the top. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, not very happy with these. And uh, these are definitely going to get replaced with proper motocross boots. For the helmet, I went with a Bell Adventure, uh, the MX-9 Adventure. And it has the MIPS technology in it, which is this, um, I don't know if you can see it, this yellow kind of stuff in there. It's like a little shell um, that kind of, it's like a little dome shell that uh, is separate from uh, the rest of the helmet. So if you have a... An impact is supposed to help with the rotation of the helmet uh, to keep you from having a, like a neck injury. And I actually experienced that. Um, so I was all set to replace this helmet with something nicer like uh, the Climb um, Cryos uh, or the um, Arai, um, whatever it's called, XD4. That's what it's called. Um, but you know what? Uh, after the crash that I had with this, I actually uh, landed right on my head. Uh, my whole body kind of went over and I rotated. You can actually see all the scratches here and up here uh, as I rolled over uh, on my head. And um, you know what? The MIPS actually did its job. So as much as, you know, this, this helmet is noisy, a little bit heavy, um, it's not super aerodynamic, it actually comes back into contention as a possibility, uh, but this one definitely needs to be replaced after that impact, and I've had it for about five years now. So uh, this was a good buy, but it also might be a good buy. I'm not sure yet. Um, so this is um, as as a starter helmet. I think this is a good purchase, um, but as a long run helmet, eh, I don't know yet. We'll see. But uh, this is what I've been currently using. So we'll see if it's good buy or. Goodbye. So let's move on to some accessories. So I've added quite a few accessories this year, a lot of safety stuff. Um, but uh, my prized possession um, that I've had for a few years would be the Moscow Moto Ugh. Backcountry uh, 35 liter panniers. Um, I don't even know if you can see me or even the bag. But these are them. You've seen them. Everybody knows these. These are the, the best bags in the business. Hands down. Um, oh. The reason, like, the reason why they are the best is just engineering. Um, the guys at Moscow and Gals that um, produce these products, test these products, um, they're riders themselves and they know what they're doing. Um, I give you an example. When I got these, and you have to attach the little side um, pouches here. You see this hole? That hole is only there so you can put a tool through it and actually get the screw in. That's it. There's no other reason for that hole. Talk about over engineering. And the same thing. There's like a little hole down here. It's just so you can get the tools in. I mean, who thinks of that stuff? It's crazy. Um, they just slide on the back plate. Uh, there's tons of reviews online. Just check them out if you want more information on these. But hands down, this is the best purchase I made in the adventure world. Um, these are going to outlast my motorcycle. Uh, this is going to go from bike to bike until these fall apart, which I doubt they ever will. These are literally worth every penny. So goodbye. So when I first started adventure riding, um, I kind of went at it a little bit ill-prepared, had an accident, broke my ribs, um, didn't have a med kit on me, 
didn't have a uh, in reach system or any of that stuff. So one of the big things that I did this year was was get ready for you know mishaps. Um, so after getting the chest protector, I also went out and I picked up myself an actual proper med kit. Um, it has everything that you can imagine in here, uh, from tourniquets to shears to you know blood clotting. Uh, to wraps, to band-aids, medicine, it's all in here. Um, splints, even. And um, I actually went with a Canadian company. Uh, it was cheaper, and um, these guys are really good. Um, highly recommend this company. They're called uh, wildmedkits.ca. And um, yeah, no, super happy with this. This lives on the back of my Moscow Moto bag. I'm actually probably going to take it one step further and get an extra tourniquet and actually keep that on my person uh, because if I do get launched off my bike and the med kit is you know 10 20 feet down the road from me and I actually you know I'm I'm hurt real bad I'm gonna have um, I think I'm gonna start putting a, a few important bits uh, on my person or get a, a second um, a second piece of it like the tourniquet um, and a few other things. So, um, yes, this is highly recommended. Haven't needed to use it yet, uh, but this was definitely a good buy. All right. So up next, we're going to do another safety bit. This is the, uh, InReach Mini 2, uh, by Garmin. And, um, you know, <laughs> they're not cheap, but if you're going to be going out in the middle of nowhere, no cell phone service, you need one of these. They, they function via satellite. You can text people uh, if need be, and you can um, send breadcrumbs or, you know, updates, um, you know, by, I think it's every 10 minutes or an hour or two hours, you can set it up. And, uh, and of course, it has the little SOS function. Um, so when you have a subscription service, you can call in the cavalry uh, if you've been injured. Uh, I learned that the hard way. Uh, a few years back, I had an accident and... Um, I was in the middle of nowhere. I was really hurt. Didn't know what to do. Couldn't lift my bike. Couldn't ride. Um, I was, you know, almost always falling unconscious. And uh, luckily, about 20 minutes after the accident, someone just happened to pass by. Um, so I got lucky in that. But I promised myself never to live that experience again. So one of these comes with me every time I go out now. Doesn't matter whether I have self-service or not. It's coming with. Goodbye. So the next piece of gear I actually don't have on me at the moment. Uh, I did go and take a shot of it on my bike, but that's the quad lock uh, system um, to hold your phone. Uh -uh. Um, that's definitely a goodbye uh, for the quad lock. Uh, trying to get that thing on uh, can be quite difficult. Uh, once it's on, it holds. It's great. Uh, tons of accessories. You can even build out your own uh, kind of rig on the website, which is really cool. Um, I've used Rockform in the past uh, when I had my, you know, normal Harleys, I guess you can say. Uh, but one of the big things I wanted to do was change up that system, make it a lot easier to do. So I actually went and picked up the um, Peak Design uh, motorcycle mount. Um, where's my phone? So the phone, I got the that on. It's just a little square. Uh, that's magnetic and you just pop it on. Actually, you know what? I'm going to open and show you. So this is the actual uh, mount itself. And check how easy that clips on. You know what I mean? And it just pops off. Um, it has a rubber mount just like the uh, quad lock system that you can get, but it just comes uh, stock with it. Uh, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to reviewing this and uh, doing a comparison, uh, but the quad lock system, I am, I don't know. It's okay. It's just not great. Uh, so this to me looks like it's going to be a much better product. Uh, so I'll be moving on to this and testing it out and I'll, I'm actually going to do a video comparing the rock form, the quad lock and the peak design probably in the spring once I get a chance to use this properly. Um, but it's pretty apparent right off the bat that this is this is the system. Now this next one is a really old one. Look at this ancient thing. This is the um, Cena S20. <laughs> I've had this for, oh my God, I have no idea how long. Um, it's been fantastic. Uh, I never really had to use it to connect with other people, but for music and talking on the phone. Um, hey, back in the day, actually, 
um, GoPro had, I don't remember which GoPro it is, but there was a backing that you could put on the GoPro and you can actually talk through the mic and it would go through the Cena to that backing uh, straight into the camera and you'd be able to vlog that way, which was really, really cool. Um, you know, so, but this is old and uh, the technology is, is past this time and it's time to move on. So I've upgraded uh, to the Cardo and I'll be testing this out this summer. And um, I'm actually really excited about this one because it has a new ability where you can actually record to your cell phone via Bluetooth. So I'm very curious to see how reliable it is and if we're able to get some, uh, you know, some communication uh, in our videos when we're doing these uh, multi-day trips uh, with other people and, and capture some of the conversation and mix that in. So that should be pretty cool. Um, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so the last piece of kit that I want to talk about is my hydration pack, which is the Usui Raw 8. Uh, I actually got this for Christmas. Thank you, sister. Uh, in 2022 or at the end of 22. And um, I've been enjoying it. Um, it's not perfect. Um, you know, every once in a while, I do get a little pinch point, but I think that more has to do with the combination of the way the chest protector is sitting on me at the, that particular time and the way that this is sitting on me uh, because there's times where I ride and I have zero problems whatsoever. So I think it's more the that combination than it is the actual product itself. The coolest thing about this is this... Uh, this harness so it's called the no dance monkey and uh it basically cinches to your body and it doesn't it, you know the whole system doesn't bounce around which is amazing um really good company and good products uh you know just find the one that that suits you best i think um you'll be uh, hard pressed to find something better in the in in this kind of space but um the only thing that, i guess the only complaint i have is this hose um, the water that is exposed, uh, gets super hot, uh, on a hot day, uh, then the rest of it is cool inside. So that's a bit of a, you kind of want to spit it out, um, but you realize you have your helmet on, uh, so you can't do that. And, uh, you kind of have to take that, uh, that hot water. I heard there's insulated, um, hoses, so I'm going to look into that and see if they can make it work with this. But, uh, this was a good gift, um, and it's not goodbye to it. And um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll keep going with it until I find something better. Okay, let's talk about camera gear. Am I in focus? Okay, let's talk about camera gear. Um, when I was thinking about making a channel, I um, I was thinking about making it like uh, this YouTuber called Shaf. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with it or not. Uh, if you're not, you should definitely check him out. Basically, he just, the ride videos uh, from a single perspective and um, really good audio and it's kind of like an ASMR motorcycle kind of channel in a way but um, I kind of wanted to do something like that but I wanted to add some like b-roll some some other shots some drone shots some other stuff like that and um, that was the goal anyway so when I set out to do the pickaxe loop that was my intention um, but when I got the footage back <laughs> I realized I actually had a story there and one thing led to the other, and now here we are. Um, so what I used to shoot last year uh, was some old gear that I had lying around. Uh, so the first thing is the Hero 10. Um, and great camera, uh, other than, you know, some of the audio quirks uh, when you attach a mic to the uh, media mod. Um, you had to, like, switch settings for it to actually work. Um, it's just, it was bizarre how it functioned. And... Um, my intention was completely, you know, get out of GoPro and maybe switch to the DJI Action 4 or that new Insta360 uh, Ace. But there was something in that footage that completely changed my mind. And I will get into that in a separate video because I think it's an important thing to, um, to talk about. Um, so you'll have to wait for the reason. But I've already gone and switched to the uh, Hero 12. And uh, that'll be my main camera uh, for the chin mount for next year. And we'll see how things go from there. So this was a goodbye, but it's also goodbye. Although I will use it as a, a B cam for maybe rear shots or, or something else. It'll, it'll still live. The next camera, uh, the one that I actually added uh, to the arsenal, uh, is the Insta360. No, Insta360 X3. What the hell is it called? Yeah, Insta360 X3. And um, I actually picked up two of them. 
Uh, the goal was uh, to be able to get some shots from the front of the bike and then the rear of the bike and be able to intercut everything, um, you know, and uh, for the most part, that worked. Um, the one thing that I dislike about the camera is the image quality because, um, you know, they're slated as being like a 5.2 or whatever camera. And um, at the end of the day, when you pick one just section, it's... Um, it's you're basically getting a 1080p uh image so it doesn't quite hold up with the other cameras um that i'm using but the freedom that these give you and uh the software is amazing like it's so easy to use um it's really easy to reframe your shots and then create a new clip from that um, I used it a ton and uh, I plan on using it uh, going into the future. So I would say, yes, these are definitely a good buy, but I really look forward to um, seeing maybe Insta do like a 4K sensor, a, a dual 4K sensor. So I think an 8K camera and um, really up the quality of these would be fantastic. So these are keepers until something better comes out. So for the drone that I was using, I had the DJI uh, Mini 3 Pro and uh, that one is already good buy. Uh, not because it's a bad drone, it's actually a really, really good drone. But the Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3 have features that I really want. So I have sold the, the Mini uh, 3 Pro and I'm um, going to be picking up, I think I'm going to go with the Air 3. And the two uh, features that uh, I really, really want is waypoints and uh, cruise control. Um, to get some of the shots that I was doing, I actually had these little uh, things that connected to the sticks and it would like you would dial in how much movement you wanted and then you would ride and made it super unsafe I actually ended up getting the drone stuck in a tree that way um, so having waypoints and uh, the cruise control is going to be um, a lot safer to fly uh, when you're you know riding a motorcycle so that's coming um, so look forward to that lastly for my camera well for the actual camera stuff um i was using the xt2 <laughs> this is like an eight-year-old camera um and uh yeah it was time for an upgrade for sure uh for this season um great little camera but i really struggled color grading the footage from this um it is an 8-bit camera as is the hero 10 and as are these so one goal is to get everything to 10 bit so the um, air 3 is going to be 10 bit the hero 12 is 10 bit um and what i'm filming on which replaces this is actually the sony a6700 so that'll be the new camera for next year um this is gonna go and uh, be sold now um if i can sell it i mean who the hell wants an eight-year-old camera but maybe there's a collector out there um so that is going to be goodbye for this and um one last thing i want to talk about actually is this now this might not be familiar to everybody um this is actually a professional uh 32-bit uh lav um i know this is becoming more popular nowadays the the 32-bit thing you know road has their um their their setup right now with their or their labs that have the 32-bit and then uh dji just released um their uh 32-bit system um but i've actually had this thing for a few years now um when i found out about 32-bit um you know, it was a um, it was a solution that I was looking for for the audio um, with motorcycling. You know, you have a low audio sound and then you have the high revving engine. And that difference um, is really hard to set up a regular 24 bit um, or 48 bit. Um, no, what is it? 24 bit uh, system. Um so you kind of had to choose in the middle and then sometimes it would clip, sometimes it would It was very hard to, or even the placement of the mic was really hard. So this 32 bit, um, actually fixes that problem because the, the latitude of the, um, of the system is so wide that 
you know, in post, you can actually tweak uh, the audio. So, you know, when you have a low idle, you can actually bring that up. When you have the uh, high revving engine uh, sound, you can actually bring that down and basically level or normalize everything. Um, so if you haven't gotten yourself into 32-bit audio for motorcycling, definitely do it because um, it's uh, going to be revolutionary. This is going to take off huge in uh, the motorcycling world. Uh, by the way, this is a tentacle... Uh, uh, track E. Um, they're not cheap. This is like a three or four hundred dollar um, lavalier. Um, and the mic that actually comes with it isn't the best. Uh, so if you really wanted to, you know, to take full advantage of this, you would actually, you know, they sell mics that are like, you know, between two and four hundred dollars um, out of my price range. Um, but you know, the the new road stuff is looks really really good. The DJI one from the reviews I saw it sounds a little tinny, but you know, whatever. Uh, pick your poison on that. But if you're getting serious about audio, um, which is the most important part of video, definitely recommend uh, something like this. Uh, or, you know, the other products, uh, but definitely get into it. So this is a, a keeper. This is a, definitely a good buy. Um, and we'll see if we add anything else uh, to the mix as well next summer. But for now, you know, uh, everything 10-bit, uh, except for these little guys. And um, yeah, we'll see what we can create next year. Okay, so that's it for me. I know it was a bit of a weird video, uh, rushing through a little bit of gear, giving you a, a few little tidbits of each uh, each item. Uh, but in the future, I'll do more proper reviews individually. I have lots of things planned, uh, you know, from trips to uh, more gear reviews. I'm a bit of a nerd when it comes to tech. So, um, yeah, uh, we will see you in the next one. See ya.